Hey guys, Rachel Brecky from The Law Talk. I just wanted to talk a little bit about commercial contracts and commercial photography. Being very clear up front, this is commercial in nature. I know that sounds like, why are you repeating this to me? But I have so many people who don't truly understand the difference between commercial and portraiture. Portraiture is typically only used in my context of anything on the law talk and all the articles that I write and in my communities talking about things of a personal nature, that the end use of the images are not going to be used in any commercial type of context. That's what the commercial category is for on the law talk and that's what we're referring to today. This video is just going to give you a little context of the documents that you need to have whenever you're shooting for commercial style photography and let's just kick it off. The very first thing non-negotiable that you need to have is a commercial photography contract. It does a couple of things. It creates the legal relationship of you and the client that you are getting into a relationship with. It's going to outline also expectations, responsibilities, um, it's also going to make sure that it protects you legally. It's going to give this legal foundation should an issue ever arise. One of the things that I also love the way that contracts work is that it allows for you to be able to use it as a backbone if you ever have a client who's overbearing and trying to make you change your business policies. Doesn't mean you don't have the autonomy to make the decision to do so, but sometimes you just wanna have a little pressure on the back, hold up that backbone so you can stand your ground, and that's what a commercial photography contract can do. This is signed to get booked. Do not shoot without this. It's gonna outline things such as payment terms, you know, how you're gonna shoot, what you're gonna shoot, all those sorts of things that you need to have included. Our contracts are written for commercial style photographers. If you're a portrait photographer who's coming over here because you want to do commercial photography, it may look a little scary, but don't worry. This is fairly normal in the commercial photography realm. The second document, and I do include this typically in the commercial photography contract, is the commercial photography license. What this is, is allowing by default, doesn't mean it can't change, but by default, you the photographer is retaining the copyright ownership of the images and you're licensing the images for use in commerce by another brand or a business or a person, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a separate legal entity. So my photography license is essentially doing that, um, is going to acknowledge who has the rights um, and what exactly is being transferred. How can they use the images? Because remember, you're the copyright holder right now. That's what we're talking about. You get to call the shots on how those images are used. So this is where negotiations really come into play in commercial relationships. There's way more negotiation in commercial relationships than there are for the personal portraiture. So if you've never done or dealt with commercial photography before, don't be scared. Also, don't be scared if they ask for copyrights to the images. That is also fairly common in uh, commercial photography as well. You just have to consider how much are you willing to sell them for or if you're even willing to sell them at all. In that case, you want to have a uh, written language to transfer over the intellectual property over to them. But keep in mind, the way that we have the documents written on the law tag is by default, they can be changed. Remember, these are just templates for you to work off of. They are for you to retain copyright ownership and license out the use from the uses that you define. <clears throat> the last document, you guys no brainer, you heard a lot about this, is a model release. This is typically only signed by the people that are in the images. It actually can relatively only be, um, unless maybe the client, the business has gotten the permissions to sign on behalf of this employee or um, the model, whoever's in the image. But typically the contract itself is gonna be signed with the business and whoever is in the image is the person that needs to sign the model release. Because what do model releases do? It's giving you permission for use of these images in marketing, but it does a little bit more than that. When people are in images, even if you retain the copyright ownership of the images that were created, the models in the images retain the publicity rights to the use of their face. So if you're going to go use those images on social media, website, or any of those other places in effort to market your business, you need permission by the clients, or I'm sorry, 
by the person in the image. And again, remember, that doesn't necessarily mean that's your client. You could have the business as the client and somebody else is in the image, or they can be one and the same. But the second thing that it does, not only with the permission um, for the use of their face, but it's also the way that I've drafted it here at the Law Talk, it's going to re uh, waive any claims of compensation that the person in the image may have for when you use it in marketing. And that's a publicity rights claim that they have. So really important for you to have that. Three documents we just talked about. Commercial photography contract creates and manages the relationship. The commercial photography license, which is retaining copyright ownership, giving the license and defining the uses to uh, the individual using the images. And the model release, which is signed by the person in the images, or someone that has permission to sign for the person in the images to uh, manage the publicity rights claims. If you guys have any questions at all when it comes to commercial photography or how all that works, please feel free to submit through the contact form. Myself or my team is more than happy to help you out. Wish you best of luck and please make sure you're setting out these expectations in these documents because you never have an issue until you have an issue.